All right, guys, so deer season is well underway in many states, and if it's like here in Virginia, it's kind of getting down to the back end of it. And some of you might have deer in the freezer that you've kind of tucked away, uh, considering taking it to the taxidermist. Maybe you're waiting on uh, seeing if you punch a different tag with a bigger buck that you'd rather have at the taxidermist, or you might be waiting on that um, Christmas dust to settle, whatever it is. Today, I wanted to go over a couple of things to consider or be mindful of if you're gonna have them in the freezer for any uh, considerable amount of time. All right, guys, so I got this deer here that's been thawing out for uh, a couple of days now, actually. It was, uh, I mean, this thing was frozen to the bone. Uh, it's been in the freezer for an extended amount of time, and a lot of times this happens. You know, you get a deer, you put them in the freezer. Maybe you don't know where you want to take them, don't know uh, any taxidermist around you, or um, it could just be that you haven't really made up your mind if you're wanting to have the buck mounted. If they're going to be in the freezer for any extended amount of time, there's some things that you want to be mindful of just for the purpose of get making uh, or giving the best specimen to be able to work on. And so I'm gonna point out a few of those things right here. And so first of all, if you've looked at some of the other videos, uh, I'm always adamant about like, especially, you know, I've seen where a lot of times when deer are getting skinned, uh, people like to have a water hose handy. And, you know, it's uh, common where a buck will get like rinsed off or even the hide. And you know, if, if they do have a lot of mud or dirt and stuff like that, uh, or really bloody, then those things can present other problems. But uh, a, a really soaking wet hide, especially if it's gonna be frozen really hard, then that presents another problem because as it's thawing out, this outer layer is uh, thawing before you can really even get to work on it or get it skinned out and get it uh, properly uh, uh, in the in the tanning process, so to speak. So big, you know, big chunks of ice and stuff like that, that can uh, create a problem. And you can see down here on this uh, deer, it's really soaking wet all around the br uh, brisket and the, the shoulder areas. So uh, I don't look for it to be a big problem on this deer. But, um, and I've had, you know, again, uh, these are just things to be considerate of because I've had deer that were in the freezer for three, four years, and people uh, just had not decided what they were gonna do with them. But, uh, so with all that being said though, something, and this, this applies to anything like um, a, uh, uh, any kind of mammals or game head. Start here at the nose and work my way back. You can see right here on this nose pad, uh, if you notice, it's uh, a little bit lighter, and as I squeeze it, uh, this, this little area here, it was probably exposed, maybe sticking up in the freezer and this has got a little bit of freezer burn so to speak and it's i don't look for it to be a problem um, you can see in the lip lower lip and in the chin area really stiff uh, this is all dried out uh, and obviously in the tongue you can see it's almost like you know uh, dehydrated moving on um, the eyes are really important on them out and if you look at both of these eyes, this is very uh, thin tissued areas. And even, you know, your lacrimal gland here, all through the, the uh, lacrimal channel, the preorbital rim, you know, all that's really dried out and shrunken in. And again, it's just not the freshest specimen to work with. If you look at this ear, it's kind of curled in and these tips are like really dry and it's kind of, you know, it's essentially freezer burn, just like if you put you know, if you go get some uh, steaks at the grocery store and put them in the freezer, well, that it starts to dehydrate and it gets, uh, it's like freeze dried. So this can be rehydrated, but these tips are deer, white tail ears or deer ears in general can be a little bit finicky to open up and, and themselves, but as they dry out, it makes it even worse. And by spinning around to look at this side, you can see this one was probably you know, curled over and had a lot of plastic over and it had that barrier and you can see that's a lot more pliable and uh, just a, a well hydrated ear. So, and so um, when we talk about dry, dried out, so to speak, the best thing you can do is create 
a really, really good moisture barrier on, on these and wrap them up. Like if you know it's going to be in there for an extended period of time, I like to use the thicker meal bags and really cover this. What I'll usually do is cape this thing out to, and I try to leave as little neck as possible. That way I can cape that. It'll thaw out fast and I can cape it out almost instant or not instantly, but uh, usually within 24 hours or less, I can get out there and, and get this off of the carcass. But uh, so I'll bring that bag up and make sure everything skin wise is covered up and I'm tying knots right here. So the only thing sticking out of the bag is the antlers. And uh, if it's like I said, if, uh, you know, thick mill bags, even double bag it, triple bag it, it's a garbage bag. It's cheap. It's a good way to ensure that you're going to get that. Um, you know have those things protected so now another thing just to kind of be mindful of i kind of talked about the water you know if you did if you did rinse them off um it, it might seem like a waste but you know find yourself some old towels or you know shop towels clean of course and um you know try to dry off a lot of that water just to where it's not sitting there thawing for a couple days um in you know kind of a bloody watery mess so to speak and so the solution again you know, you for one, make sure they're bagged up really well. And ultimately what I would do is if you're even considering it, you know, get, get a line with the taxidermist that, that you, uh, you know, talk, talk to your buddies, find out who somebody is, even if you're not ready to drop him off just yet. A lot of times the taxidermist, he'll, if you told him, hey, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure what I want to do with this. Um, I'd like to go ahead and get him caped out. If they're caped out, you can fold the, face and the ears up inside most of the hide even with a raw green cape and uh, protect all those it's more sensitive areas so to speak for longer with the with these thicker hided areas maybe even decide hey uh, i'd like to go ahead and just tan him and then i'll make a decision on it and uh, taxidermists should be able to give you a quote on what they would charge just to do that and then you can make your mind up about it uh, or you could, like I said, just um, just get him caped out in a raw state and, you know, uh, pay for that. So uh, just just some things to be mindful. That way you can get the best uh, specimen from your mount. All right, guys. So that, like I said, these things, they, these are applicable if you're, whether you're a hunter and you got a buck in the freezer or whether you're studying taxidermy. And uh, j these are just things to be mindful of to make sure you take the best care of your trophy. I got some really cool stuff lined up. I'm going to be dropping some uh, awesome videos with some hunts from the 2021 season. And we got the 2022 turkey season rolling around. And I can't wait for it. If you know me, I'm like getting pumped up about it. So you guys be sure and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.